So, what do we mean by safety critical software? Well, obviously it's software with some kind of executive role in a safety critical system, which is broadly something that might kill someone or have some other grave consequence if it goes wrong. Aerospace, rail, automotive, medical, all kinds of industries have safety critical systems and software is more and more a part of all of them. Safety critical software needs to be designed to reduce risk and it generally needs to be certified to a recognized standard. There are a number of these standards and I'll talk briefly about some of them later on, but all of them set out development practices and coding guidelines that must be followed in order to gain certification. So code should be simple and clear rather than devious and obscure. I mean, it's quite fun writing very clever code, but safety critical code needs to be very easy to verify, very easy to maintain. Generally, we want to make everything as predictable as possible. So, for example, memory should be pre-allocated, that is, statically allocated, so we can be sure that we're not going to run out. Ideally, we don't want to be repurposing areas of memory on the fly. We want our software to run regular integrity checks on vital data and handle errors in a safe way. And we don't want any surprises in the development lifecycle either. To obtain certification, safety critical software needs to be developed according to a well-defined, rigorous and thoroughly audited process. I'm just going to fill in a little bit more about safety integrity levels, etc., as it's handy to know what the SafeRTOS certification is driven by. The most widely applicable standard for safety critical systems is the International Electrotechnical Commission's IEC 61508, which defines four safety integrity levels. SIL 1 being the lowest, applicable to the least potentially dangerous safety critical systems, and SIL 4 being the highest. SIL-4 is for stuff like nuclear reactors where you really don't want it to go wrong. There are various industry-specific standards, and I've listed a few of them here. IEC 61508 is, if you like, the granddaddy of these, and it's the most broadly applicable. It not only sets out the quantitative basis for the SIL levels and the modes of operation and so on, but it covers the whole life cycle of safety functions. To meet this standard, a safety function has to be designed, developed and deployed with well-audited rigour. Uh, ISO 26262 covers automotive applications, Senelec 50126, 50128 and 50129 are for railways, uh, ED12, DO178, DO254 and a bunch of SAE standards are for aviation and so on. They all have some broadly analogous notion of safety integrity levels, although the names differ and they're not directly comparable, ranging from lowest risk on the left of this chart through to the highest risk on the right. So we see that the automotive standard has a lower risk category called QM for quality management that has no analogue in 61508 or Senelec schemes, although it's broadly similar to the aviation DALE level. Now that's it for this video. Uh, remember, you can always download more resources for free from our free download centre.